We're going to head up to the top of our form and start looking at our individual form fields. The first form field that we wanted to add according to our plan was a name. Now, requiring a name on a survey is not the best idea. We're going to add this form field here, but we're not going to make it a requirement that people fill it out to submit the form because it might discourage people from filling in your survey. So, by clicking on the field, or this particular field box, it will push a drop-down where you can look at the field properties and also an advanced tab. This particular field label is name, and this is where our respondent would enter their first and last name. You'll notice down here we have some name formats, and there's three of them available to us. Normal, Extended, and Simple. Normal asks for a first and last name. Extended asks for a prefix, first, last, and a suffix. And the simple name asks for just one box. Uh, ostensibly, you would leave some description here telling them to input their full name. We're going to leave this as normal and ask for a first and last name and we're not going to require it uh, for the reasons we mentioned before. You can click on the advanced field and this will allow you to edit the back end of your form. You'll notice up here there is a field ID and this is field ID 1. This corresponds to name. So when you're working with this form or when you're working uh, in styling this through CSS, you will uh, refer to field ID 1 or field 1. You can change that here by adding information through the admin label. We can call this the name label or form name. Uh, you can have some sort of validation message, meaning if someone doesn't fill this out or they don't fill it out correctly, you can put a custom message in here uh, giving them the error message and, and why they haven't filled it out correctly. And then the CSS class name is here, and this would be for your CSS styling, so you could target this field specifically, maybe to change it. Uh, background color or make it different somehow from the other fields. Uh, and then you have visibility options. Uh, this is going to be visible to everyone. There are some fields uh, that you might want to use for calculation purposes uh, that might not want to be visible to the public or the respondent and only uh, visible to the admin. This is obviously not that case. You can allow the field to be populated dynamically with things like IP addresses from the respondent. That's not necessarily needed here. And then you can also enable conditional logic, which would uh, allow this form field to be displayed based on a condition being true or false. This is the first field. We're not going to worry about that, but we will use conditional later. So we'll just set it to uh, leave under name, and we will leave the normal format. We will click on the header bar once to collapse that field and move on to email, which is our second field. So you'll notice here the same thing happens when we click on the email box, it drops down giving us properties in advance. You'll see that theme running throughout all of the Gravity Form fields. This one we will leave the field label as email. Now with an email field you have the option to enable email confirmation and the system will ping the email being submitted to make sure that it is set up and is a valid email address. We don't necessarily need that kind of security so we'll leave that blank. I don't think we need to add a description here. People pretty much know how to fill out an email address inside of a form. Again, we don't want to require email addresses. Some people are a little bit um, iffy about adding that kind of information to a form, so we don't want to discourage people from filling out our survey. One thing you can check, though, is the no duplicates. And what this will do is it will allow only one response per email address. So you won't have the same person making duplicate survey responses. This helps you validate the data a little bit better. So we will click on the no duplicates in this field. And then we will close the email field and move on to our third form field. Now the third form field, if we expand this, corresponds to the third question. And this is our first kind of question that gets into the nitty gritty of the survey, which is, was it easy for you to receive the service? So uh, when, when asking for customer feedback, you wanna make sure that your service is readily available, easily available for this person, and it was easy for them to receive it. And this is going to be our first question. So we are going to click down here in the field label, and we wanna change that to what we planned earlier. Was it easy for you to receive this service? with a question mark. And then we have a couple choices here because we enable this as a drop-down field. And the two choices we have are yes and no. So first to start, we will get rid of the third choice. We will highlight the first choice. We will click yes. We will click no. And those are our two choices. 
Now you'll see down here, enable enhanced user interface. If you mouse over this, basically what it does is it uses jQuery scripts to allow easing in and out of these fields. We like to use this here, we'll check that. If it has uh, a problem loading on your particular theme, if there's a jQuery problem, you'll notice it right away with this field. You would just come back to this form and disable this checkbox on these fields so that there isn't a mix up between the jQuery scripts running on your website. You might wanna add a description here. Again, with a yes, no question, I think it's pretty easy to understand uh, how to fill this out. And we will want to make this required. We will wanna make sure that people fill out this field because of course that's one of the main questions we're looking to here. Now if you were to select no duplicates in this type of field, it's not going to base that on an email like before. No duplicates refers to the individual field we're working with. In the email field before, when we click no duplicates, we wanted to make sure that no duplicate emails were submitted. Here, it's asking us for this particular field, which is a yes, no field. If we were to click no duplicates here, it's only gonna take one yes, one no, and it's not gonna submit any other forms. So we wanna make sure that we leave that blank. And then we'll move on to the next, which is our first conditional based on the response to this question, was it easy for you to receive the service? So we will close this field just by clicking on the header and we will come to the field number four. And this again is our first conditional and it's basically going to pop up only if the customer says no. And if no, we're going to ask them what problems arose in receiving the service. So we're going to edit the field level and we're going to say, if no, what were the problems? And we're going to have a few choices here. We're gonna to say too far away, too expensive, did not like customer service. And we're going to leave it at just three. You get the point. You could click plus and add more and you could do virtually unlimited numbers of these. Again, we'll click on the enhanced user interface and we might want to put a description here such as choose one. Now, if you wanted to, you can change this from a drop down field to a multi-select field in which the user would be able to select as many of these as he wanted. And we're also going to require this question. And then we will move on to question number four, which is a standard question. But before we do that, we want to make sure we set up the conditional nature of this. So we'll go to advanced and we have the same idea as before with admin label, we could change, we could change the CSS class selector but we're going to enable conditional logic here. And this is going to push a dropdown and it's going to ask us to show or hide this field based on whether or not the following conditions match. So we want this field initially to be hidden. We only want it to show if a certain condition matches. So uh, basically that condition is the previous question, question number three, was it easy for you to receive this service? We want that or this field to show only if they answer no. So we're going to see here, show this field if all of the following match. And that is, was this service easy to receive this? Or, sorry, the question was, was it easy for you to receive this service? If that question, the answer to that is yes, We'll change that to no. If the answer to that question is no, it's going to show this field. And that's exactly what we want with this conditional nature. So we'll click here and then we'll go on to the next. The next question is, was this service helpful to you? So we will click there and we will change that name. And again, we will put yes, no in here eliminate the third choice, enable the enhanced user interface, and we will make it a required question. We don't have to worry about conditionals here. The next question is a conditional based on the previous question, was the serv service helpful to you? So we're going to change the title and we're gonna say if no, or I'm sorry, we're basing this on yes. If yes, 
how did the service help you specifically? And we are allowing them to write as much as they want. And we're going to make this a required question. And we're going to click on advanced to do the conditionals. And we're going to enable this conditional logic. We're going to show this field with this question, was this helpful to you? If that is set to yes, this field will show. And then when we're done with that, we'll click on the heading, minimize that, and move on to the next question. The next question is a drop-down box. What is your favorite feature of the service? What is your favorite? And we're giving them several choices. We will put that here. Location, pricing, and convenience. Enhanced user interface. We will require this and we will minimize this field. Now the next question we are asking them to tell us if there are possible improvements to the service. So this doesn't need to be a required question. So what we will do is come in here and ask are there improvements that you would recommend? And we'll leave this open. We don't want to require this. It doesn't need to be conditional. And we will leave that as is and move on to the next.